Episode 9 The American Civil War, the Burnside Expedition, and the Battle of New Bern. Hello, and welcome back to the P.S. Gilmore story and his part in the Burnside Expedition. And indeed, his description about reclaiming the Carolinas in the early Civil War. This is a story that has never been told, at least the way I tell it, and never been as much as such thought of, at least the way I found it out. So I hope you will enjoy it because it needs to be heard. So before I continue, please click like and subscribe so that you will be notified about the next episode. It will also help a YouTube to rank the channel and spread what I feel is a wonderful story about Gilmore and indeed a fantastic story about America. So please click subscribe. In advance, may I also tell you that I am about to mention some details that you won't have heard before. However, it's not possible to cover everything in such a short doc documentary, so uh, sit back and relax. Continuing on the Roanoke battle we covered last week, and remember that happened on February the 7th and 8th of 1862. About February the 10th, uh, a, a, a small battle took place called the Battle of Elizabeth City. Um, and it was a naval battle and resulted in a naval victory for the Union and for the Burnside expedition. Um, Gilmore or the infantry did not take part in that battle in any meaningful way. The next battle he mentioned uh, in any detail was indeed New Bern on March the 14th. And there was little doubt that this was a huge experience for both Gilmore and his band of musicians. Gilmore stated later in the year that the band's uh, uh, experience on the battlefield rendered the organisation all the better equipped for musical service. He considered that the band was still a part of the gallant force from which he had been so recently detached. And we are proud to claim an attachment with so noble a re regiment, which is at present in a high state of discipline and in action may be relied upon as a unit. He defined officers such as Colonel Stevenson as a disciplinarian, commissary, um, judge ad advocate and true gentleman are the second in command uh, Colonel Osborne, who, who knew the full meaning of the word duty, and not only does he expect, but he sees to it that every man under his command must faithfully perform the same or suffer the consequences. Uh, indeed, um, uh, Stevenson, Colonel Stevenson, later became Brigadier General uh, Thomas Stevenson, Stevenson and Osborne became Brevet Brigadier uh, General. The line and staff officers are as full of enthusiasm as the, they were when the first glow of patriotism inspired them to go forth in their country's cause. The boys of the rank and file rather th they doubt that a soldier's life is always gay, but there is a good time coming when they will look back with as much pleasure and satisfaction upon their war experience as the members of the band do at the present moment. That was in the history of the 24th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment by Alfred Rowe, and it was written after um, they had been mustered out of the army. So how important was the was music for the recruit, for the private, or indeed the musician in the camp. By coincidence, last week, a lovely letter was offered on eBay from the 24th Massachusetts Infantry. And this this uh, happens 
uh, I, you know that you 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 can't predict what will turn up on on eBay or on, on any of the auction sites. But all of the dates lined up. I didn't bid on it, and um, but this is the details that I got from this. The 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 dates lined up, and as did the record of the the writer line up in the same history of the regiment I just read from. It was written in October 1861. Josiah jo uh, Osgood wrote home from Annapolis to his home uh, to and parents about camp. Today, a, a number of companies practiced in firing at a basket. Our regiment, regiment is winning as good a name for its fine appearance when on the review and in drilling in the manual of, of arms. In the latter, the regiment has won great praise. Our band has attained great attention. They nightly delight us with their beautiful music. If the men are ill-natured, music at once soothes out every rough feeling. Our privilege in hearing such a band as Patrick Gilmore's is, you can be assured, felt to be very great. Josiah was in Company C of the 24th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment and he would survive the war. But from Roanoke and Newburn in a letter by a volunteer to his uh, girlfriend, uh, Fanny uh, Partridge, dated April 1862. We get another um, opinion of the band. It states, I don't know what we would have done without our band. It is acknowledged by everyone to be the best on the division. Every night about sundown, Gilmore gives us a splendid con concert playing selections from the operas some very pretty marches, quick steps, waltzes and the like, most of which are composed by himself or Zoller, a member of the band. Thus you see, we get a great deal of new music, notwithstanding we are off in the woods. Gilmore used to give us, uh, give some of the most fashionable we had at, at home, and we lack nothing but the stringed instruments. No. In place, however, we have fine reed instruments for which no other band can boast. And that was written by the regiment member, as I said to his girlfriend in April 62, 1862. But we have to emphasize there were no luxuries for the men in camp. Heat, cold, frost, rain, mud, hunger, boredom, Black horse flies, the smell of men and animals, death, dirty creeks and a complete lack of basic sanitation. They were all in abundance. Only time and boredom were plentiful. Playing cards followed by head lice racing were the most popular pastimes and music was welcomed universally. Otherwise, everyone waited waited for the next bugle call, for the next order, for the next battle, for the next letter to arrive, or waited for death. In the war, experts suggested uh, that for every two men who died of battle-related injuries, three died off the battlefield from diseases like typhoid, dysentery, typhus, measles and cholera. In this battle, that's New Bern, Burnside's forces suffered 90 fatalities. One of those was a 22-year-old musician from Gilmore's band called Isaac Moorhouse. He died in New Bern of typhus fever and was from Boston. Of course, they also waited for supplies from home, such as this description from Charles Ramsey in the 44th Ohio Infantry Band. In a letter from November the 19th, 1861, from Camp Piat in uh, Virginia to his wife, 
and this is from uh, my collection. He wrote, they had to construct a heater between two tents to keep themselves warm. The box with boots arrived yesterday and her letter had arrived yesterday also and he read it over and over again. John Hawkins' wife sent two nice cakes and some nice fresh butter. He divided them with the members of the band and we had a regular feast at dinner. Troy, Cedarville and Yellow Springs have all sent blankets. We are getting that we play very well and are highly praised by the officers for the progress we have made, yet there are some in the band that will never make players. I hear the band of the 5th Virginia Regiment playing for the dress parade and I presume we will get the call and have to, have to get out and play. In the distance they are busy shooing up the horses of the regiment. The 44th Ohio served primarily in Kentucky, Tennessee and West Virginia. Charles Ramsey was mustered into service on the 8th of October 1861 and mustered out on the 8th of October 1862. But this letter shows how ill-equipped these men were for service with little supplies and indeed with, without the support of communities back home it would be indeed questionable how long they could have survived. That's from the McNamara Gilmore Collection. In battle, we learn again from Gilmore's own program uh, later that the band often played the Star Spangled Banner and Dixieland within hearing of both armies, thus acting as a harmonizing link between the two. That's, that was written by Gilmore from the artists of the Jubilee Tour program, McNamara Gilmore Collection. But far from the records, again, of the 22nd Regiment, a Massachusetts Infantry Regiment, comes this detail ignored by many historians about another function of the musicians, that of acting as stretcher bearer. We've little accurate information on this other than this verified report of an example of the bravery of these unarmed men doing their duty. The history of the 24th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment on page 417 tells the following story. Suggesting initially that bands generally had somehow decided not to fulfill their function, that being to retrieve the injured from the battlefield. However, it continues in the engagement of Tranters Creek in June 1862 that is, after Newburn. The surgeon assistant, called Spear, remarks that the band was right up where it belonged and Gilmore and Arbuckle, under fire, were helping the wounded back to the rear. Please note, Matthew Arbuckle was a brilliant one, uh, first cornetist from Glasgow in Scotland and a close friend of Patrick Sarsfield Gilmore until his death in 1880. But the two musicians, that is Gilmore, at five foot seven and Arbuckle at six foot three, must have been a comical looking pair running across a, a battlefield connected by the, by, uh, by the, um, at, at the stretcher. Much later again, uh, Gilmore, in fact 14 years later, told an amusing but heartfelt story about an event during the war when he acted as a stretcher bearer. I'll tell the story first in his words and you'll see, uh, you'll see the reason I'm telling the story because I think it portrays Gilmore as a person with frailties of any human in a war situation. You see, we musicians who march to battle are really the only ones who are protected, said Gilmore. We, of course, we can handle no weapons 
and we are at the absolute mercy of the bullet and the weapon to our duty of uh, furnishing the inspiring strains to the marching soldiers we have another one that of carrying off the wounded from the field on stretchers in one of the battles we were on our way to the scene of action when we met a soldier running away from the field what's the matter i inquired in chorus with several others of the musicians the man hurriedly replied oh nothing at all i'm uh, only wounded uh, in one of the fingers of my left hand i'm off to have it, have it dressed and will return again quickly but the light of inspiration had come to us no unprotected march for us when our good angels had thrown such a, a great chance in our way we seized the man and said get on that stretcher no no he answered only one of my fingers is hurt i can get on faster myself why should i be carried do i walk with my hand let me go he merely repeated my order we nearly uh, repeated our, the order get on the stretcher he didn't heed us and again we said more emphatically get on the stretcher seeing he was obdurate we made a boldly seizure of him and put him forcibly on the waiting stretcher then we beat a hasty retreat with our burden we carried him down a long hill to a place of safety and we took good care to place our wounded soldier in a distant place of security how were we to help it if the battle was nearly over when we returned to the field i always tell the generals uh, with whom I thought that I was always in advance of them in the rear. In fact, later on in September of 1862, uh, Gilmore gave a concert in Boston Music Hall in aid of raising money to equip new bands with uh, instruments for the war. And he wrote in preparation for the concert, We shall appear as a military band only, performing the gems of mu such music as have floated over the waves and mingled with the howling winds of Hatteras, such patriotic airs as fe fell upon the ears of the 3,000 rebel soldiers and echoed through the dense woods of Roanoke. Such strains as followed our victorious march to Newburn and vibrated through the desert streets of that one once first city and much more than all of this music that has revived the drooping spirit of many a weary soldier and soothed the paint of many a wounded patriot yes gilmore was indeed loyal to the cause of the union it was indeed his ambition to correct what he saw as the wrongs suffered by the oppressed slave population and he would never swerve from that aim gilmore's band were was mustered out like all other bands in the union uh, by order general order 78 um, and was issued on, in august of 1862 the muster out date for gilmore's band itself was october the 2nd 1862 and the band which numbered 25 at an enlistment had lost one member Isaac Moorhouse in New Bern of typhoid fever coming up next week um, we will visit uh, New Orleans and how Gilmore having been mustered out of the army and been given an opportunity to basically semi-retire in the safety of Boston, how he decided to go back to war. Thank you very much and please click on subscribe. I appreciate your attention and I would appreciate any comments that you have.